Are we ready to get started? Everybody? It is so great to see this room full. I haven't seen this in I don't know how many months, years, or whatever, but thank you so much for coming out and participating. And Carol, how do I shut off the music? That's a good song, though, because it wasn't my imagination. This is for real. I know y'all are eager to find out what have we been doing and where we're going and what's going on, so we will get this party started. Some of y'all have already seen uh, the website. Some have logged in, played with it. Some of y'all have been upgraded and all that good stuff. So why, why are we changing and what, why are we going this route? Uh, we know we have leaders out in the industry, third party uh, websites, that command a lot of attention and taking a lot of interest away from our MLS area listings.com, if you will. So uh, last November, we met with Solid Earth in uh, Orlando, Florida at NAR convention. They had been working on and putting together a new MLS platform called Spring. Now, Bill, you can correct me. We're not going to actually call it Spring, if you will. But it'll be our new MLS platform. And it's uh, probably in some of our executive committees meetings, we're probably comparing this to when we lost the Bible back in 2000, that glorious MLS book. And we had to make a change. So. We feel like making this change, if we communicate it well, we instruct it well, and respond well, it should go very easy, very smooth, very simple. That's a plan. That's not execution, but that's a plan. So we are rebranding. We are reestablishing our association. We want the consumer and the public and our members to know that we are an association. We are one. We are strong. We are a team, OK? New logo. New website, changes to the MLS platform as we know it, and one of the things we noticed, we changed three, three years ago, three and a half years ago, we went to GCAR. So we've been working with a local PR firm here in town, and they went out and said, uh, what's GCAR? And they said, well, it's got to be some kind of a dealership, right? Greater car? Good car. Nobody knew what G car was unless they read the logo and said it stood for the Greater Chattanooga Association of Realtors. And we went with the Greater Chattanooga Association of Realtors because it's just not Chattanooga. We are so close to North Georgia and our partners with our Northwest Georgia Council. We're so close to Marion County, Sequatchie County, Bledsoe County, River Counties, MLS, and everything. So we, we went with Greater Chattanooga. So now, we decided to go with this new logo, which is Greater Chattanooga Association of Realtors. And as you can see, what prominently sticks out is Greater Chattanooga Realtors. So that's kind of cool, but the association, anytime we write it out, will always be capitalized. But right now, we want everybody to see. You'll notice there's not a large skyline. Chattanooga is not a big metropolitan area. We have something that resembles the uh, aquarium, but mostly we have residential and commercial. And that's what this website's going to be all about. The new website, how do I click right here? No? The other way. Yeah, you work that thing. Okay. <laughs> this, this baby boomer's still learning, let me tell you. What you see, when, of course, if, for those of y'all who've already logged in and looked around and searched around and stuff like that, you'll see up in the upper left-hand corner, that part won't change a bit. That's where you can pay for online classes, you can register for classes, and you can also go to List it, which is our current MLS platform, okay? Then in the upper right-hand corner, we have our social media, and that's the Facebook button, YouTube button, and of course, Twitter. 
We're in the process of updating our social media presence with the new logo. So that will come about also. Upcoming classes and events. You can see there that you can do it on a daily basis, you can do it on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. Okay. We'll be working with trees after the, this week, second half of the year. Right now, trees, you know, you've been registering with them, and it's been a little kind of com complicated or a little confusing. So we'll be working with trees for the second half of the year. You'll do everything on this website. One place to go, one place to register, one place to pay. And then, of course, this is probably the biggest thing that we're looking forward to is you're going to have two options. You can do a residential search or you can do your commercial search. Our uh, friends on the commercial side have been campaigning for a while and we think this is going to be the best thing going. Uh, everybody heard about Catalyst? Has anybody joined Catalyst or signed up for the trial membership of Catalyst? Yeah, correct, Carla, good. That is correct. You'll be able to search. You'll be able to search the properties at any time. The price wasn't on the, you know, what's the price going to be after the trial membership? What's the combined, Retta, what's the combined price, Retta or Bonnie, if you're solid earth and? Solid earth and, well, right now I think it's 750. It's 750 for back. 760? We're working with Catalyst right now to do a 90-day trial membership. They, they said, let's do 30. We said 90, and we're going to hopefully settle on 45 or 60. We're but uh, what, we think, what we think, now, also please remember, if you have your commercial listing on listed right now under the commercial part of it, it'll be there until a year from now. Okay? <coughs> Unless, of course, you sell it before then. But we won't be able to edit, change it, or anything like that. You'll just keep it on there or bring it over to Catalyst. Residential search. Some of y'all, Bobby, I know you're going to say something. There won't be any. <laughs> there won't be any more areas. Okay, the areas are going away. We'll search by, and I'll let Bill uh, get into that for us. Um, We'll search by zip codes, we'll search by subdivisions, we'll search by high school, middle school, grammar school, elementary, whatever. There's a lot of mumbling. All right, there's a lot of mumbling. I'm sorry? Radius search will still be available. Yeah. So, let's get started with this thing. From Solid Earth today, we have Bill Fowler. We have Leslie Cobb, and we have Kayla Stanfield. So right now, I'd like to turn it over to them, and let's get dig deep into this, Bill. All right. Hey, thank, thank you again. Yeah. Right. Uh, I can do it. <laughs> I can do it. If uh, would you mind grabbing that laptop? Everybody has their iPads, phones, and laptops turned off. We'll, you can follow along. So what, what you learned today, it'd be great if you would go back to your offices and evangelize. 
Um, I will give you some things that you might want to take down notes-wise. This is not a class where you will uh, absorb information and leave. This is going to be a discussion. Uh, I'd like to get your information about what I show you. I'm going to give you lots and lots of details. Um, but this is an ongoing process, an ongoing project, just like Lizzie is. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm Bill from Solid Earth, and I've been in my very first day on the job was in Chattanooga training the Lizzie system on November something of 2001. In my, and this is how it started. In my very first training class in Chattanooga, uh, a woman fell and broke her nose. Um, that was cool. And then in the next training class, uh, yeah, ambulance came, the whole thing. I was like, well, this is working out beautifully. And then the next class, the afternoon class, um, our projector exploded. I mean, like, exploded. And that was cool. Um, the next day was much better. Uh, well, what's going to happen today? To let you know, we've been in Chattanooga for what? That's almost 13 years. Uh, we've had a long, good relationship with technology, but technology has changed so dramatically in 13 years. In five years, it's changed so dramatically. You know, there are four laptops in this room. There are 16 <coughs> iPads. So what listed means right now is you have to go someplace to do your work, your office, or your house. Listed doesn't work well on the tablet. Uh, it works like most other websites that are 13 years old work on a tablet. But the world has changed. Towers, you know, PC towers, don't sell. You can find one for 150 bucks because that's not where the universe is. The universe is moving. You have always been moving. That's why what Mark said about the Bible, the reason why everybody wanted to see the Bible stay is because they could pick it up and carry it with them wherever it went. So who cares if the information is bad? <laughs> it's with you, right? So other things that have changed regarding the Bible is your consumer has all that information. Your customer comes to you with more information about a house than you have. A lot of times, it's wrong. How many of you have held a Zestimate in your hands? <laughs> One could argue that we have already lost this battle. So what do you do? If you're a company like Solid Earth, you could have said, okay, Chattanooga, we realize that Listed is an old girl and needs to be retired. We can keep taking your money until Zillow takes over the world, and then we'll just go off and do something else, and good luck to you. Instead, we decided two years ago that we would not scrap list it, but more shutter that project. It's the Boeing 707, right? And so it still flies, it still has a good service record, but it's time to put that into pasture and to build something new. So we started over. We lost some employees. We had to let some people go who weren't skilled and equipped to take us to the next level. Think about this in your own office. Think about this in your own universe. The world has changed. So we hired new people. And we brought in some thoroughbred developers and said, okay, if you were going to redesign an MLS system, if you are going to build a data platform for real estate professionals, where would you start? <coughs> okay, well, let's start with the non-negotiables. Where would you start? Mobile, obviously. You're building a system for a tablet. You're building a system for this not for a desktop. <clears throat> the other thing is responsive design, device agnosticism. That's what they call it in the development community. So no matter what browser you use, no matter what uh, 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 platform you use, this is not just an iPad-friendly system. It's not just a Samsung-friendly system. Any device, any current browser, that's an important thing. If you're running you know, Windows 95, then you might want to consider it. Okay. <laughs> So what are some other non-negotiables? In the face of the challenges that we have before us, what are some other non-negotiables? What's our biggest problem? User-friendly. User-friendly. Yeah. What's the universal real estate big problem? There are several of them. You can just pick one. We have challenges from the outside. So there are third-party entities. I call them Zulia. <laughs> that portray themselves as you, right? <coughs> this estimate. Here's how much my house is worth. Well, where did that come from? Well, that came from Zillow. Well, where did that data come from? The consumer doesn't care. 
You know, Zillow doesn't care where the data comes from. What do they care about? They care about their shareholders. Zillow will tell you when asked, because I have, what business are you in? They're in the business of advertising. They just happen to provide a product based on real estate data. So they aggregate all this. You know, Zillow started out as a company as being a public records aggregator. They're bringing in large amounts of public records data, and we all know the value of public records data. It's sketchy at best. <coughs> the consumer didn't care. The consumer has an open door into a database and access to information they perceive you want to give them. So Zillow is selling access, not data, not anything else, not products. They're selling access that they need and not getting from you. So, back up two years ago. At Solid Earth, we had this long strategic meeting, and we said, we're gonna start over again with an MLS system, where do we start with? It isn't with the hot sheet. It isn't with a feature list a mile long, like you have it listed right now. It's with what are the challenges that are facing our customer? What are the challenges facing our customer's customer? So, mobility and access. So what could we do in Chattanooga that would push Zulia out of the number one spot in Google searches? Now, I'm not, I'm not here to say that, that Zulia is the devil, because depending on who you talk to, there's somebody to say <laughs> that there are brokers in this country who are paying Zillow a hefty monthly fee and making a fine business. And there's no reason to dispel that, because that's an important part of the process. Now, there's lots of arguments on the other side of that too, but it's important to know that I walk that line. There are people who value Zillow's performance and service. There are people who think that they're evil. So I can't walk into a room and say, death to Zillow. You can, but I can't. So what we did was we built a new platform. You start out by saying, okay, what is Zillow doing that is so attractive? What are they doing that causes us to have you know, great heartburn? Um, number one, the beautiful user interface. Beautiful national level user interface. And what's the first thing that you see right there? What draws your eye? Search. How many of your websites have pictures of you or your Lhasa Apso? Or this is how great I am, this is how great I am, this is how much business I sold, I'm a million dollar producer, I'm a this, I'm a this, I'm a this. All they're doing is here's the information that you want. Quickly. And where did they get that idea from? The best in the business. <coughs> Google has solved this problem. Give us what we want, no junk. How do you find, how can I log in to, to, to my Google account? Way up there in the corner. Menu options are there, but they're, they're not hidden, but they're subtle. So what you have, and it can be described in a lot of different ways, but what you have is a local and I'm calling it a Zillow killer. So you have a local property search that isn't just a property search. It's lots of things. It's mobile. And it's leveraging the things that only you can provide your customer, which is local. So it's branded to you. It's branded to you. You're the professional in the room. It's got the realtor standards behind it. It's got rules and regulations behind it. Every bit of data that comes into this system Goes through, goes through listed at the moment. It won't always be that case. But it's important for us to know that our differentiator between Zillow and anybody else that may come along is rules, regulations, standards. So any data that shows up here passes through the MLS committee's filter of quality control. Does that make sense? So as you're out there in the community, and as this site grows and matures over time, you're gonna have somebody say, okay, what is the difference between what this is and what Zillow offers. Like, what is the difference between this website and Zillow? Why did I go here and not the Truly or somewhere else? And the answer is quality. There are professionals at the end of this. Does that make any sense? Okay, yes, ma'am. Well, where does Zillow get their information? Where do they upload it? Where does Truly upload Yeah, a variety of places. Well, in our case, it comes right from our MLS. In in a lot of cases, the MLS has been, uh, what's the proper term here? 
Great. And it flies. I got to remain. Zillow is where Zillow is where eyeballs are. This goes back to the broker who does pay Zillow a fee to remain at the top of their list. Like my house, my house is for sale in Huntsville. The listing agent that you saw in Zillow was not the listing agent on my house. The reason why they do that is to ensure that the person who is asking about my house gets a response. Lots of us don't answer emails. So the reason why there are fees going to Zillow, and I have this argument every time I go to an industry meeting, is why do you, Mr. MLS person, or why do you, Mr. Broker, <coughs> basically give Walmart all your stuff and they sell it and don't give you anything in return? Because that's for people. So the rebuttal to that is you make the thing that will be your markets, that's where the people are. If you offer average home buyer, home seller in Chattanooga an option away from Zillow, and you know the one or two or three differentiators between a national third party and what you have in your own backyard, this will, and I'm not going to say eventually, I'm going to say fairly rapidly, replace any other alternative. This is the difference between eBay and Craigslist. Craigslist is a free-for-all. Zillow is a free-for-all. I, as a homeowner, can go to Zillow, claim my property, and put in whatever I want to. How many square feet do you have? 300,000. <laughs> They'll take it. We won't. So it's quality control is the number one key differentiator between what anybody else does and what you have here represented through your organization. Okay, let's go. That's the history, and that's the <laughs> nutshell history. By the way, let me tell you this. One more thing before we begin. So Solidar does this. So two years ago, we're like, okay, we're starting over, we're mobility, and we're the thing, and the local Zulu thing, and market level stuff, and we're gonna make it beautiful, it's gonna be awesome. And all of our customers were like, cool, but could you add this other thing and list it? Because that's what we're using right now. So I know we got these great ideas, and you guys are cool, and you're innovative, and all that stuff, but really all we want is fast horses. Right? The whole Henry Ford thing. He built the car, and they're like, it's ugly, it moves too slow. Can you just make my horse faster? So we're dealing in an area of faster horses. Chattanooga, like, takes me by the shoulders in Orlando and sits me down at lunch and says, uh, we've been a part of this pinnacle program, Stephen Swanepoel, national level kind of rethinking, association, branding, and so on, and says, we want, you to, we want you to do this. And so we were like, well, this is really cool because we're doing this, and how would you like to be first? Because everybody else was like, oh, hey, innovation? <laughs> you know, we just want to do, we want safety. <coughs> and by the way, can you bring the book back? <laughs> so, I, to their testament, to Carol and Mark and Retta and Bonnie and the leadership here, you know how important it is that we're in this room first, and that you step to the plate, you invested in the marketing of this, you bought into the concept, this is going to keep all of us relevant for the next several years. We just bought ourselves quite a bit of time with this. So. You don't have to like hip hip hooray or anything, but thank the leadership of this organization for being bold enough to do what we're doing right now. Okay, enough of that. That was, now they're buying me lunch. Okay, so there, there's, to talk about innovation in searching for real estate, there aren't a whole lot of innovations um, that you can just kind of pull out by asking the public to come to a website and search for property. So you get to this point, you see the images back there. Again, really heavily branded to the Chattanooga area. Um, fairly simple, fairly straightforward on what you can do here. You select your, you can type in a neighborhood, um, a zip, an agent name. This is a, a fairly smart natural language field here. Type in whatever you want and off you go. I'm just going to pick a price range, pretty hefty price range, and just go. Yeah, again, I will reiterate, if anybody's on the Wi-Fi on guest one, if you could scoot off of that and get over here to guest two, that would be uh, super tremendous. Okay, a couple of things we need to digest here immediately is this is the 
this is going to be your new MLS system. Okay, let's like let's let that sink in. <laughs> this is going to be your new MLS system. Here's what we're up against, folks. Um, Solid Earth as a company has been doing MLS for 14 years. And here's what we've been doing. We have been building a giant software monster called Listing. It has untold dozens of features, menu options, reports, CMA, <coughs> AVMs, report designers, mortgage calculators, dishwashers, um, car magnet applicators. It does way too much. It is the Microsoft Excel of MLSs. You use it, you use 10% of what it does, and the rest of it is largely useless. So in rethinking this, the non-negotiables for an MLS system in 2014, <coughs> mobile, publicly accessible, Zillow, pusher outer, and then simplify this thing. We spend hours and hours and hours every month going through all the requests for listed that are driven usually by one person in that market. Man, we gotta, we gotta add mobile home chimney suite attributes. Really? I mean, do we really have to do that? Is that MLS anymore? You're beginning to, it's like Facebook. Facebook is now a game center. Facebook is now, has become a glorified happy birthday card. You know, it's, a, it's gone away from what it's supposed to be. But pretty soon, Facebook will cease to be the thing that we all fell in love with. So it has its core value, and then it has a whole bunch of other stuff that no one cares about. And eventually, we're all going to go to something else, because Facebook is the victim of what's called a feature creep. Too much in this thing, and now it's no longer the thing. That's what list it is. That's what it is right now. So, when I say this is your MLS system, it's dial back. We're not taking anything away from you. We're just doing things different. Okay, so this, that thing right there that hopefully you can see pretty clearly, uh, looks pretty good over there, over there too. It's a little bright right here, but that, this thing is quick search. Like, quick search has 17 to 30 fields, quick search. And that's it, right there. Because the national language searching right there, property features is on the input sheet, you know, you've got like the top one third section where you fill out the fields, and the rest of it is all these click and control click stuff. All those features are right there. Just type it in and add it. Type in a new one and add it, like you do on Amazon, or like you do on like, you know, Walmart.com. I mean, this is like 2014 stuff here. So that's searching. Over here, fairly straightforward, but that's your property list, and just a few more things about how this is new. As you scroll, as you come down, there is no next button. Next, bu next buttons are so like 1995. So just like Facebook or Twitter, as you scroll through the timeline, you're just gonna get more results, assuming that the Wi-Fi is cooperating. But that's the idea. You're going to continually see, I've got at the top here, top left-hand corner, 60 of 3,400 listings. You would just keep on scrolling and seeing those listings until you got to 34, 38. Another thing on the far right-hand right side is an ad. Nobody freak out. I won't tell you how much that you make every month on ads, but it's more than zero dollars. <laughs> There's a couple of things at play here. Number one is the consumer, which I'm not logged into anything. This is the public facing site, right? It's also going to be the MLS, but that's later on. But for now, it's the public facing site. Consumers expect ads. It's not a crime anymore. And what you'll see from us, um, we're your trusted technology partner here. There will be no dancing hula girls or Cialis ads, or anything else that we wouldn't want there. But we are, we are in the, I'm sorry, we are in the um, data publishing business. People in the data publishing business have ads. Ads make money. Money causes the MLS to lower your views. These things happen over time. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, one of the things you were saying that uh, Zillow makes Zillow less, um, I don't know what you call it, uh, genuine than the MLS is the fact that when you were selling your home in Huntsville, 
another agent popped up who wasn't even associated with your house because they had paid Zillow. Right. Well, is this going to be the same? Are agents going to be able to buy ads and put themselves number one on our MLS? No. There is no pay up system here. This is, this is a... Well, how do you get an ad there? What if I want to put my company ad there? And you are not eligible for an ad. <laughs> that was the answer to my question. Yeah. If you're Home Depot, yes. If you are, if you are in the real estate business, no. What about my construction company? What about how company? Yeah, this is, this is a determination that a guy wearing my logo is not going to make. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, now, going right now, we're going after EPD, Fiber Optics, Comcast, Lowe's, Home Depot. Something that would not compete with us in our line of business, okay? That's, that's the charge we're giving our public relations firm to go after the big boys to advertise, not title companies, not mortgage lenders, not termite inspectors, not home inspectors. Can we focus on Chattanooga companies, Blue Cross, you know, people like that? We can. We can. They got to be good all around. As long as they don't sell homeowners insurance, they are. You know, and, and um, to that point, there is a group of people who pay a fee to be involved in this organization and they are affiliates. And they are an underutilized source of resources. I mean, Decipher that however you like. But in each of the strategic planning sessions that we go to in places like Chattanooga, all over the country, that is a heavy topic. Non-use revenue. I mean, everybody's trying to figure out a way to lower the cost of doing business in this building, therefore lowering the cost of you doing business out of this building. And affiliates are have always been standing outside of this building waiting for an opportunity to reach you. I mean, they buy donuts at your meetings. They're like falling over themselves to hand you their business card. That's a way to take care of that. And give them out a very easy, simple, direct revenue out. But those are the home inspectors, the title companies, the mortgage brokers. Those are the people that Mark says aren't going to be in the ads. The, those affiliate members. Yeah. This is a this is a Am I misunderstanding something here? You're not. But number one, the only thing I want to cover is there are ads on the site. How we manage ads on the site is an open debate for another time. This is a Google ad. This is not an ad that's managed internally at Solid Earth. These are Google ads. So we have an ad network where someone can buy an ad locally, but if there is no local ad to place there, like a newspaper. This is called a run of press ad. So Google will just place an ad based on the content of the site. It will place something relevant that passes through our filter, our filter, that says it can't be that, 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 or that. Okay. As an MLS board member, this we're very aware of, uh, I don't know, of the conflicts it could be with ads, and we're very protective over who can put ads there and who can't. So we're not going to put, you know, oh, look at our agent of the month or something like that. We're, none of that's going to be on there. These aren't going to be in competition. It's more just to have a revenue so we can have free classes here at the association for members. Yeah, and this is a, a fantastic discussion to make because, number one, you have a platform that will drive ad revenue. What you do with ad revenue, who you invite in that door, is completely up to you. It's a, it's a victory for us that we will have a website that's popular enough to even have an ad on it in the first place. Because Zillow is making that money off of your, off of your property, literally. So if we can draw from that and we can make that less relevant nationally and make it local, then we win. So ads as a concept is that cow, horse, pig out of the barn. It's up to us to manage that. And that's the discussion that the board is having, is how to manage that. Okay, moving along. Um, again, just keep in mind, I am not logged in, in in any way. I am still a consumer, and I'm just kind of tooling around here looking for a property. Let's go and grab one there. It's on Rodeo Drive. How cosmopolitan. I think that might be Rodeo. <laughs> but you get the idea. Um, Rebecca Maples has a property at 283 Rodeo or Rodeo Drive. I think if I were her, I would definitely say Rodeo. Um, and some things that you're normal, you're used to seeing. This is the agent. This is the customer full report out of listed. Um, Published up here, you know, you look at photos, you can see, slide through the photos like so. Um, beautiful. Some things that you're not used to seeing is a quick look at the area. Again, not logged in. 
This is a consumer who has just browsed to this website and found this property. There are certain things they're used to see. They can see this section right here is available on a number of different websites. Zillow, Trulia, Move.com, Homes.com, Realtor.com, the list is long. The section over on the right can only be seen in one place, and that's here. So again, like I said before, what Zillow provides is access. They provide free information. What we have to do is, I don't want to race Zillow to the bottom of the ethical ladder in order to battle them for the eyeballs of your consumers. What we have to do is those things that only we do, we have to shove back at the front of this website. So that's an example. And again, I haven't said this yet, but I need to tell you this. Is listed, since listed has been in Chattanooga, it's been a 13 year long project that has no completion date. It always changes, it always moves. This is only the beginning of the opportunities for data to the consumer at no charge to them. It will continue to roll out on a regular basis through the decision making process that happens in this building. But we have to continue to innovate in terms of what does access mean to your consumer? What data do we provide them? Do we reveal sold data? Nobody freak out. Do we, what do we do that other people are doing so we can maintain that level of integrity, confidence with the consumer? What are our limits? And we can't be afraid of ourselves just because um, of taboo, of previous, of previous decisions or previous practices. Um, there are some things that are coming to this report, things like school data, things like tax data, things like demographics, things like neighborhood data. As we gather this stuff, well, you remember, who was in a training class? I mean, a lot of you were here when listed first got off the ground. One of the things that we highlighted way back then were maps. We were big into maps, uh, and that was before Google, you know, had Google Maps and changed the world. But at the time, we had overlays on maps, so we had flood zones and property boundaries and all that cool stuff. Um, well, when we launched in Chattanooga, we only had a few layers in those maps. Well, now we have several. And map layers is one of those things that as they become available, we throw them in. Same thing with this. As that extra data becomes available, it'll show up here. Another important differentiator between what we're seeing right now and what Zillow or anybody else may offer, Lope.com and so on, is spring or homes.gcar.net is the story of a property, not the story of the marketing of a property. Does that make sense? So it is an MLS system, and it will be your MLS system, but it isn't just MLS information. If someone types in 123 Main Street, and 123 Main Street has never been listed, they will still get information, because that's what we're providing. We're, we are professionals on property, on real property, not just professionals on property that might have bought, been bought, or sold in the last 25 years. So, all that stuff will be in there as that data becomes available. We're negotiating this, and it's a very complicated thing to get all that information under one roof. There's lots of different people involved, lots of different, well, junk. Um, it's our job to buy that, negotiate that, and put it in there, and we're, we're doing that as quickly as we can. Yeah, will directions be there? This is a, there's, there's directions the realtor puts in, okay? We know kind of how good that is. Turn left, you know, low um, But then there's also driving directions. Driving directions are a lot simpler now in the world of Bing and, and Google, and in some cases, Apple Maps, not so much. Um, but yes, driving directions will come. That's something that's obviously key uh, to that consumer. Yes, ma'am? Um, can you go back to the, to the screen, part of the screen that showed the features for just a second? I have a question about that. says as a consumer I'm thinking I mean I know where that's coming from but combined with kitchen for example what's combined with kitchen it's not the way it's displaying the information I think is confusing exactly I agree okay. this is it's, it's MLS data one of the reasons why you do away with areas is to help begin to solve problems like that how does the consumer decipher the vernacular that we deal in every day um, in Huntsville, where I'm from, they have two-letter acronyms for uh, room description. 
CF, CM, VR, PL, these kinds of things, crown molding, walk-in closet is WC. And so when you go to the public site, that's what you see. WC, PL, CL, PL. So what happens is, is that when, when, when you see this, and when your board members see this, they begin to think, okay, how do we begin to change how we do this so that when that information is revealed to the consumer, it doesn't cause issues. That's the process we're beginning to undertake here and everywhere. Tagging of pictures to see what room is what. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think we'll need a little more information about that. To like associate a picture with a room? Yeah. Yeah, we're not doing that currently. It's not a bad idea. Okay, let's move along. Um, I'm not logged in. But what a consumer can do when they haven't given us anything, any information about them, it's fairly thin. So if I am a me, I'm a consumer, and I'm interested to live, I've always wanted to live on Rodeo Drive, like who wouldn't? Um, I can save this property. I can contact Rebecca directly. Rebecca will get an email. Um, or I can click save, and when I click save, I get a, okay, so you want to save this. It's kind of like we're letting them shop in the store. But once they pick something up, they want to go to the dressing room, we're going to ask them who they are. But you see, we're not asking for much. Email address, and, and uh, oh, excuse me, we're not asking for much. We're uh, asking them to log in and get started right here. They can log in directly. They've already done this. Or otherwise, they can click get started, and we're going to send them an email. They're going to get an email that will allow them to build a profile. Once they build a profile, it's a uh, double acceptance. You know, like when you're on a website, you say, I want to do this. They send you an email and say, confirm your email address to make sure we're talking to a human. Um, that's a very difficult thing in this world is to not get dabbied up like over and over and over again on your website. Spam and all kinds of other stuff. You want to make the process easy for the consumer. What you don't want to do is open the front door so wide that you get a bunch of junk. How many of you have pretty active IDX sites right now? And how many of those leads as a percentage come through as soup as valid, yes, actual human being lead? Few. Few. Nationally, 7% are humans. Um, for the most part, you get trash. How does that work where it says log in with Google? Log in with your Google account. If I were to click that, how does that work? What's your name? <laughs> You're, you are, me and you are tracking. Okay. Um, Sorry. No, that's okay. That's good. Okay, I've just logged in. See the top right hand corner? It's turned into me. If you have a Gmail account, rejoice. Um, okay, we're not going to go real far down this rabbit hole, but Google has what's called an API, or an application programming interface that allows, basically allows developers like us to crack open that Google door and get information out and push information in. One thing that you're not going to see in spring is a, is a really robust prospecting system or CRM or client relationship management. It's because through the Google API, spring, spring uh, gcar.net um, will allow me to, fairly soon, access my contact list. Right now, it knows my username and password through Google and it just logged me in. So instead of me creating an email address and a password for this site and one for that site, it combines the two. It knows I'm a, a, a Google user. It validates my credentials over at Google and says, okay, I trust you. And by the way, I got your picture. There it is. So if you have a Gmail account, you can log into this site through your Google email address. You want to do it one time. See, I didn't have to fill anything out. I just went, mm, and, and there I am in. Soon, because Facebook also has an API and Twitter has an API, you'll be able to do the same thing with any of those things, Google, Facebook, or Twitter. <coughs> so that's pretty cool. So as I'm, since I'm logged into Gmail, I've already filled all this stuff out. Um, I'm going to run over here to uh, <coughs> my profile. And, you know, not to, we're not going to go through this click by click, but I can go, I can click on, I can go back to my Rodeo Drive address, click on that, and now when I send an email, um, what's her name, the agent is going to see like, my information pulled directly from my profile. Not have to retype everything over. Okay, so I have a profile, and just like you have a profile, everybody got an email this morning, right? Yesterday. 
Yesterday. You got one yesterday. It turns out that could have gone to your spam folder. I mean, anything can go to your spam folder depending on your individual settings. So be sure to check that. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, check your spam folder. And once you do that, you'll log in, you'll go here. Please put your picture in and um, you can you know resize it and, and frame it really neat and um, yeah, you can use your 25-year-old glamour shot. <laughs> um, but I'm not logged in as an agent. I'm logged in as a consumer, and I want to show you just a couple of quick things. Is this this is fairly revolutionary in in the MLS Association of Realtors kind of realm? That is a consumer profile, and that implies a whole bunch of really cool opportunities as we grow this site together. The consumer is freely giving information to a website run by you. That's, that's pretty huge. They, can, they will provide us things like their birthday, their demographic information, how many kids are in their household. Whatever we choose to, to put here, we can ask and field information about that consumer. Now before we all start about leads and who's going to manage this and how, how do I meet this guy and I don't know how much money he makes every year and all that kind of stuff, just consider for, for now this is a, a lockbox full of customers that are that trust this organization enough to provide a profile for themselves. There's a lot of things we can do with this, but I want you to know that there's, there's a balance here. We want to be true to the consumer. We want to give them a trusted place to, to shop and deal with you. We also want to protect them because it's really important that we remain trusted. So this person, when I establish a profile for myself, I don't instantly get a phone call from someone trying to sell me something. That is an immediate put off. So we have to protect that consumer's path in this website. Protect them, yet make sure that you receive the value from that relationship. How we go about doing that is something we're going we're to work with um, as the site matures. But consumers have a profile like so. Um, they have a my agent. <coughs> this is where but we start talking about um, leads. Because in the, the pantheon of menu options that a consumer is, um, has revealed to them, they have the suggested connect with an agent. Enter your agent's unique code below to instantly connect with them. So let's run over here and show you what that means. <coughs> This is an agent profile. You can see it's a little bit deeper. All that information on the right, this is a test agent, by the way. That's Jason Bateman. Um, on the agent profile, they have an agent, agent tools area. So remember, in the consumer, they had a My Agent tab. In the agent profile, you have a agent tools area. And you've got a seven-digit numerical item code. Everyone in here has one, and it's unique. Everybody has a different. That's your agent code that if you buddy up with me, I can make no promises that I will connect with you, but I would put that right there. I type that in as the consumer, type in your agent code, and we now have a closed loop of communication within this website environment. So anything, any property that I choose, and I ask for more information, it goes to you. It essentially makes spring, we part of that, an IDX site just between two of and as long as I have your code in that space, we have that closed loop of communication. Don't make me mad, or I'll delete you, and I'll go on somebody else. But that code could you know, be on the back of your business card. Hey, we've got this site. It's mobile. Check it out on your phone. Anything you see in there passes through our rules and regs. It's good information. It's up to the minute. Here's my code. Go in there, see something, make a profile, put my code in there, and we're working it. No, it doesn't have any legal ramifications. This isn't recad or whatever the version of that is in Tennessee. It's just, it's just a, a, a uh, relationship. Does that make sense? So we can't change that. Is that the only way they can get the code is you personally give it to them? They can search for it. They can search for you, and they can find your code that way. It'll be on your profile. Can we change it to something easy? Yeah, I want you to be able to do that. My development team is, is pushing back on me to change it to something easier because if you make it, you know, Jane S 
when there's like seven JSs, and then there's like, if you make it J Simpson, well, what if you divorce that jerk Simpson? You know, you, you need to have um, a constant. It needs to be un, not duplicatable and not hackable. And there's at the moment that's what it is. If we change it, we'll change it um, later on. That's a that's a key thing. That's something you've got to walk away from here. If you don't remember anything. Remember my name, and remember this website, and remember that you can do that right now. That's really cool. All right. Um, the lead generation thing. We're wrapping up here, um, but I want to tell you a few more things. Like I said earlier, it's mobile, responsive design, so you can get it on your tablet, you can get it on your phone. It was built for this thing as well as for that thing and your, and your uh, PC. It is built on API, not really important for you to know the ins and outs of that. But at its basic, it is a lead generating monster. Lead generating monster. The idea is we market this site, the consumer comes in, they're searching for up to date, real time, beautifully uh, uh, protected and rules and regulations filtered properties, and you are behind that. So, how do you see that lead? How long has this been live? How long has it been live? Uh, about two weeks. <coughs> but on a bit live just for development testing. I mean, you couldn't browse to it and see it. Okay. Can everybody see that microscopic one up there? It's, a, it's red. When you log in to your agent account and you click on your name and you see this is the dashboard, when you go to the dashboard and you see that little red number right there, hopefully it has, hopefully you have a little red number there. It means someone out there in the universe has gone to this website and they have asked about your property. <coughs> And you have a lead. You may not be able to see that on this screen unless you're up front, but over here on the sides, that is Spring Admin would be the first and last name of this person. I love this would be the comment that they placed on that um, form they filled out. You know the form that was adjacent to the property? One sec. At the very end of that is a timer. Tell me your name again. Carla, me and Carla were talking earlier about how Zillow will put somebody else's face next to your listing. There's a reason why they do that, and it's not just to make you mad. It's because that person pays into the Zillow system, and here's the thing, they're paying attention. What Zillow wants to do is, when Bill Fowler goes to Zillow and wants to know more about 123 West Fork Lane, they have got to get a response. No questions asked. Somebody has got to acknowledge that person's desire for more information instead of just crickets. Do you know how many people hear crickets more often than a response? 60%. So that is our dilemma. That is our dilemma. Because if I go to, to Zillow and search 123 West Fort Lane and it happens to be listed by, I don't know, Jane Smith. And, but on next to that listing in Zillow is Jim Thornton. Jim's gonna respond. Jane, maybe not. Well, Jane's gonna get a, a, a lead here. <coughs> Jane's a listing agent. We're not in the business of, of lead shenanigans. If somebody wants to know more about this property, the listing agent is going to get this lead. Now they, so, the caveat here is they have a certain amount of time that they have to claim this lead. They're gonna get an email, we're going to send a flock of pigeons to land on their car. We're going to do everything we possibly can to tell them, please answer this email. And it's sitting right there. So all the all the this listing agent has to do is go there within, right now it's within an hour. And I think an hour is, and the, within an hour on a mobile site that you can log into whenever you're done will choose, in your car, at the restaurant, at the doctor's office, anywhere, to claim a lead within an hour, I think, is a, a generous amount of time. So all you gotta do is go over here 
and click claim now. Here's another cool thing. What's coming next for this platform is your broker just saw that you claimed the lead. The broker can pull a report to say, Jane Smith, paying attention. If that lead expires, where does the lead go? To the broker. Who then decides, hey Jane, your lead just expired, here's your second chance. Or, I'm giving this to Joe, or I'm giving this to somebody else, or I'm just going to call it myself. How long should the broker have? That lead has a timer. There's a person on the other end of this, and they're waiting. They just waited an hour, and now it's going to the broker. How long does the broker have to respond to that lead? What is it now? A day? 72 hours, and I think that's too long. Okay, so you get the idea here. What happens to it after the broker doesn't answer? We have a G <laughs> car is not a hitman. Uh, he's from New Jersey, and he is going to go to your house and take one of your emails. No, once it goes, once it exits the broker channel, it goes to a lead pool. Can I ask a question? When it's 3 a.m., you got 72 hours for that broker. If somebody. Yeah, great question. I mean, what happens when you get a lead at 3 a.m.? What do you do now? Look at it in the morning. Right, sure. Yeah, that's a, tell me your name. John, that's a great point. What, what was set up here, I'm, I'm getting to you, I'm sorry. What was set up here is, okay, what if it happens at 3 a.m.? I guess that's up to the broker. That is the key statement of this entire process. Everything you see here is up to the broker. No one is making decisions on how the lead should be handled except the person who owns that property through which that lead was collected. Does that make sense? We are not Zillow, we are not Trulia, we are battling them. We have to make some strategic decisions on how we handle this stuff to do better than they are. And so it's up to the broker. That 72 hour rule, I think, should be less. The point is, that's the de a default right now. It's system wide. You've got an hour to respond to that lead. The broker has 72 hours. That lead should fall through out of your collection area. But the, the fact is, the broker has ultimate control. And soon, that broker can say, well, for you, it's two hours. Or maybe it's three hours. Or maybe it's seven minutes. The broker will be able to control that timer. Can that on timer be adjusted? Yes, yeah, absolutely. The number can be adjusted. Manually by the broker. Yes, ma'am. Then I've got two questions. Can you set a default time, in other words, for every agent <laughs> as the broker that from the hours of, say, 9 p.m. till 8 a.m.? In other words, can you set default so that I, as the broker, don't get all these notifications. Spoken like a true broker. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want a bunch of notifications all night long that could be handled. So it's sure. default yeah. time. The, what's happening right now is that we have a, that leads are being collected. The site will be up and running. It will be marketed. I think, what's the, what's the date that, that things are really going to start to get fun? So on August 1st. So between now and August 1st, we have time to talk about this and how it's going to work. Between now and August 1st, hopefully your broker dashboard, the broker lead dashboard will be completed, and you individually can say, for my office, I want to do this, this, and this. And I'm going to be on vacation from this time to this time, and it's going to go through this. We're building that out. But for right now, for the purposes of this largely demonstrative conversation, number one, it, that's how it's going to work. The defaults are an hour for an agent and 72 hours for a broker. Yes, My other question is, will it send notifications to agents? Like we get, say, on Facebook, we can set it where it either drops at the top or on our thing. Will it send notifications like that? Or do we have to always log in to see them? You'll receive an email when a new lead comes in. It's a good thing What about a text? <coughs> yeah, text texting is happening. I don't know if the texting is messaging. The messaging module will come next on the on the docket for us to complete uh, over the next couple of weeks. So, texting 
I, I mean, I think that in our business, texting is so much more valuable than email. I mean, it's ridiculous. Like, while I'm standing here, I got like 70 uh, Viagra emails. I mean, that's just, it's trash, okay? No comment. Um, but it's, 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 no, it's almost useless for a business communication. So texting is definitely a part of the equation. Okay, I have forgotten so many things. We're not done yet, but I was like thinking of the stuff that I need to tell you before we cash out again. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, agent an hour, um, broker 72 hours, lead pool is, and I also need to cover seller leads um, as well. Okay, there are no leads to claim in the lead pool. The lead pool is, remember I asked you this, these are philosophical questions, like, okay, the agent has an hour to claim that lead. They don't. It goes to the broker. The broker has 73 days to claim that lead, and they don't. Um, big one. Lead pool. So then you've got this person who has waited now three days and one hour. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, no. of course, of course, of course they have. Well, let's just say uh, they're very patient, or they use the internet at the library or something. I don't know. And so now there is a lead pool. Now, I mean, I want your your thoughts on this. Maybe I do, maybe I don't actually. But what if there were a big room? Imagine this is a room. And it's at the association because it's online. And there are as, as many people as are in this room right now who are still waiting for a response on this website. Any of you, any of you could walk in this room and say, 123 Main Street. And they'll be like, oh yeah, okay. And they'll walk over to you and ask you questions. So it's this lead pool. It's, it's this giant room full of people who are awaiting a response. You can go to that lead pool and say, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. You can claim it. Because all we are in the business of is making sure people get service, right? That's the, the baseline of the, of the whole organization, is serving the buyer and seller. And I'll ask you this, how else should we do? Because that lead cannot move, we cannot lose them. And if we don't release it to the membership at large, what do we do? So they'll stay in the lead pool indefinitely until someone picks them up. And I would think that a rookie agent would be all over the lead pool, all over. So, you, the purpose of this talk today and this discussion today is here's what you got, here's why we did it, here's how it works, here are the defaults, here's what you can expect when someone asks you, hey, what's going on at the association, what's new? I hope you say that's what's new. And when they say, okay, what's, why am I doing this and not Zillow? Then you have some quick elevator kind of speech. Here's why. Quality control is huge. Let me ask you this. Does anybody ever ask you what a realtor is? My wife. What is it? <laughs> yeah. Does anybody care? My wife does. All right, let me ask you this. This is, this is a uh, rhetorical question. Are we not quality control? Are we not local? Are each of you not your own brand? That you sell yourself every day? That's what this is. I mean, I, would, I, I think, of course, technology can solve all of those problems. But I think in our case, the same things you would say about what makes you different than anybody else are the same things that make this different than anybody else. Quality control, professional, standards. Framing, trust. So that's what we want to do. We want to continue to do things that cause people to trust us and want to use us. Um, big ticket items that I have forgotten. Can I ask a question? I know you were working on trying to see if we were going to be able to have our prospects in the There's, there's two big things about, and by the way, since I searched, oh yeah, sorry, the question is, can we have all our prospects shoved into here without us having to do anything? The early answer, I mean, you should, our development people are hilarious. If you know engineers, they're the same way. Um, black belt, brown shoes, that kind of guy. Um, the, 
first answer was no, we can't do that. The second answer, now they looked at the data, it became a little bit less of a no. Safe searches are probably a no. You have to rebuild your searches here. The data is completely different. Safe searches are a monster. Prospecting is a little different. And so I think we're still holding out. The people who talk to you for a living are still holding out hope that's going to happen. Uh, we'll, we'll see. At the moment, it's a tentative name. No, no, no. Oh, great question. On August 1st, is listed to evaporate. While I would love to say yes, um, anybody familiar with the technology bell curve? Technology adoption kind of does like this. Uh, I wish I, I would show you a, a graph. But like, you know the bell curve in school where you would have like A's and F's and a bunch of people with C's in the middle? Technology adoption happens a very similar way. You, know, you have early adopters who are camping out at the Apple store for the next iPad or whatever. They're innovators. They're early adopters. Then you have like my mom at the very end who will like buy technology only after I buy it and shove it in her hand because I'm tired of fixing the old thing she's got. So in the middle you have everybody. What's going to happen is, is when we turn this on, your innovators and early adopters are going to just slam it. They want this, they think we're late. And then you have a whole bunch of other people that are waiting to see when is this going to be an MLS system? When will it? It's not an MLS system right now. It's not. Uh, it will be. By November, I think you're going to see major strides toward it replacing Listed. But Listed is going to be on, and this is like, open your ears. Listed is going to be on for as long as you want it to be on. All right? Like, it's the patch. You don't have to stop smoking, because then that's when you like run into traffic and stuff. Um, we will keep it on for as long as you need it to be on. But this is the new thing. And they can run side by side, but at some point, Carol's going to send an email that's going to say, hey, we're not adding listings to listing anymore. That's the moment when that transition happens. And it will be gnashing of teeth. Yeah, really, this is a this is a pinky toe into the water of the transition of away from listing. We're, we really wanted to solve the biggest problem first. And the biggest problem was we have an image problem. We have a branding problem. We have a, somebody needs to close the back door and lock it problem. And so that's what this does. Uh, the MLS problem, I mean, it's, it's a problem, but it's not an emergency house on fire problem. It will be probably by this time next year. And by this time next year, I would expect that most people would be using this as a de facto MLS and list it would be a hack problem. Yes. Will, uh, will agents be able to go in and right now I think it just has office numbers under the agent's name, but will they be able to go in and put in their cell phone and stuff like that? Yeah, you should be able to right now go in, log in, go to your profile. And, and where do agents log in? I'm not sure. Where do agents log in? I think half of us are like logged in as a consumer. Walk us through the thing. process. I'm yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Get a late notification by email. What do we do to retrieve it? Yeah, when you go, when a consumer goes to Sprint, it's probably start the answer like this. When the consumer goes to Spring, they will try to send an email or they'll try to do something that requires a login. There's a get started link at the bottom of that. That's the consumer path. You And, and then they receive an email that says verify your email address. Everyone in this room should have received an email this morning <coughs> to log in. You should not have to go to the website to start that process by because you're logging as a consumer. You don't have agent privileges if you go through the front door. If you haven't gotten an email, then you can check with someone here at the office and make sure that you get that email. That's your only key to being an agent within the system. If you put in a, uh, if you go like front door stuff, you're a consumer. You don't see the lead stuff, you don't see any of that stuff. Your email is your key in. If you don't have it, check your spam folder. If you still don't see it, I'm sure we can resend them. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I had a couple of calls this morning of people who didn't get the, raise your hand if you did not get the no reply email. This, what's the subject so we can, I forget what. Welcome to your new residential MLS platform. Hey, Mom, what's your point? And we thought it was coming from No Reply, and just heard it, and it actually came from NoReplyAtSolidEarth.com. Okay. No, what was the exact thing it came from? No Reply at SolidEarth.com. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got my computer. I'm going to go back and start the program. Hang on. It does not list uh, like lots and acres. Right. Is that not going to be added or no. Currently residential? I don't know. What are the plans for uh, a third categories? <coughs> <laughs> we'll have everything eventually.
initially. We're, we're crawling right now before we start walking, and then we'll be walking before we start running. Okay, and then also on the property features, is that going to be where they actually have to spell this out? So, because they don't actually know how our features are actually listed. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, I'm a land broker, and if you put in wooded or tree, what are they going to look for? Yeah, let me get, let's, this goes, kind of goes back to the question of the naming conventions that you use right now and how they're translated to a professional kind of level. Um, let's look at that. Property features right here. The question is, you've got a bunch of features and they may or may not make any sense to the consumer whatsoever. So we're really kind of asking them to do the best they can with what we have. So when you type in pool, yeah, that's pretty simple. That, that, that's a good example, all right? If you type in, I want a tree lot, got nothing. So do I want a wooded lot? So it's relieving it up to them to try to hopefully figure that out. Right now, it won't even pull lots up. I clicked on farms, and all I get is farms. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. Let's let's look at this because there's anything's possible. Let's. What if we had a little question mark right here, and the question mark opened up a PDF to the consumer that was as long as your arm that had all the translations for all the junk we use right now. Just, I mean, I'm looking at this from a consumer standpoint. That makes it even worse. I gotta know what this means so I can search by this. I, I would think this is a challenge over the next 12 months to the MLS committee to begin to look at things and say, why do we call it this? Why do we use this? Why do we do this and not this? Right now, I think it's, I wouldn't say it's a significant problem, but I would think it's a translation issue. Sure. I'm not gonna make that decision, but I think that highlights a very important thing. We, we have a website that's now built for the, for the consumer. We're already beginning to think like the consumer. We need to take that the next step and the next step beyond that. Yes, ma'am. On my iPad, I was trying to just try to do the same thing, and we don't have the drop down box. Is that just a glitch with the iPad? Or is that? <coughs> Should be. Um, let me look at it myself. The, the iPhone also has next and buttons, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> while, while Bill's doing that, I got a question. For the ones that didn't receive the no reply email, did you receive your MLS dues by no. email? No. No. So the same people that didn't get this email didn't get their MLS dues also? No. Is that correct or is that an incorrect statement? No, I, I received an email yesterday, but I didn't get my dues. Raise your hands on how many people have actually gone through their profile and in the current MLS and changed their name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, task force uh, second half of this year because that's one of the biggest things we're dealing with is lack of communication and that's one of the things we're going to address to make sure we're communicating to all our members. So if you do get a survey, a Zoomerang or anything like that, I please and beg with you to please answer them. Please answer these surveys for when we send them in. I updated my information and it still does not show up on the search. When someone sees one of my listings, Okay. Enlisted. 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 Enlisted.
So uh, Spring or GR.net will also have a seller process as well, and it looks like this. On the main page, when you look at searching for property, there's also a time to sell your home, question mark. So as a consumer, I can click get started, and it will walk me through a path of if I want to sell my house. Maybe I'm an issue in selling, maybe I'm not, but I can still put my address in here to be part of my profile. You saw the profile we were talking about earlier, and the information was going to be a part of the consumer profile. This is part of it. So as a consumer goes to where do we live? I'm just going to put in something general, and let's see what happens. All right, which maple did I mean? So I can choose one of these properties, let's say, Good enough for me, that one. I've got three bedrooms, I've got uh, two baths, I've got 2,000 square feet, I've got other amenities. Yeah, I think my home is worth 300000 I'd like to sell it for half a million. Um, and I want to sell it tomorrow. And go. Okay, here's the dealio. Um, I just put in my information. It's, it's fairly loose. There is no commitment. I'm not connected to an agent. I'm logged into the, to the site. I've put myself a profile. I've built a profile. I haven't connected with an agent. All I've done is told a database someplace where I live and that I might be interested in selling my house, period. And then if I want to, it can say, <coughs> now let us introduce you to some people that might be worthy of your business. And you can search for someone, a potential seller agent. It's a fairly thin process right now. Really, what we've just done logically leads to a, an area where you would see a selection of people based on some criteria that we're still attempting to define. But the idea is we have to provide a path for sellers. We have to get them catered to as much as we do buyers. Lots of sites are just keyed on generating leads on property that's displayed beautifully, and there really isn't a seller path. So just to let you know, there is a seller path, it's, being, it's maturing right now. What we've just done is really all you can do. Assuming you're logged in, you have a profile, you can go through the seller process and just say, here's my property, here are some of its attributes, very thin. And then if I choose to, I can select an uh, agent that will potentially sell my property. When, when I select an agent from that list, if I just type in a name and I select that agent, and it's you, you get an email that says, hey, someone is connected with you and they potentially want to sell this address. Does that make sense? Just again, letting you know it's there, and that will be built out uh, more as signatures. So at this point, if they enter that information and don't choose an agent, where does that data go within the It's simply stored on their profile. Okay, it's also there. Right, correct. And if they do put an agent's name and the agent gets an email saying you've got a, a potential seller prospect, is it under the same time thing, you know, the agent has an hour or the broker for 72 hours and then it goes into the pool? Or I'll just show you. Um, let's see if I can go to. Okay. <coughs> Give me that. Um, if you log in, let's. Well, we've already got one of these in process, and so instead of like firing off a live one and potentially selling my house, uh, Leslie will log in and she'll show you that.
question? Yes, sir. Hey, on, everybody. Sir? Will there be an app developed? There actually will not be an app developed. The, the, the reason is, is this is browser driven. So if you go to homes.gcar.net on your phone, it renders correctly on your phone. Same thing on your on your tablet or your PC. So there will not be something you can download. There will not be anything in the iTunes store or in the um, Google store either. All um, browser driven. Okay, Leslie's logged in yeah, as, uh, and this is, your question was, where will I see seller leads? They just, I mean, they just refreshed the, uh, the database, so now the leads have a new yeah. time vision. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that wasn't there a minute ago, was uh, it? Under the leads area, is there a seller lead section? Oh, sorry. I don't think we... I so your seller lead will show up here just like the buyer leads do? See that section right there? There is no expiration for seller leads, just so you all know. There is no expiration for someone that says they want to use you to sell their house. It shows up, and you have an internal messaging system within Spring. So instead of having to swap emails with them, and then go back to the site to check and see what the updates are, it all happens here. So you send an email to the seller, and they send one back to you, and that dialogue takes place on that side of the screen. You'll see that when someone um, contacts you. And here's some advice uh, today. We've already seen a couple people in the front row have, well, one pointed out that, that they can't log out from the mobile uh, mobile device, which I have to report now. Today is a launch day, so we're going to find a few things that need to be corrected, but it's all behind the login. The site's up and running. We want to tell friends and family about this, and I would have friends and family uh, go in and ask questions about your property. See the lead process a few times before it's live and running. In August, there are going to be lots of people using this site. You want to know how it works before you get somebody off the street that you have to educate, or we'll educate you. So use the sign, kick the tires, have any other questions, have any issues, if you report something, you know how to get to it. All right, go eat donuts. Thank you all very much for coming. Are we excited? Yay. Please, please go back to your office.